And as we go here, I'm not sure exactly at what point I'll ever do this or how often or and how much detail I'll go depending on the system, but okay, we've got F-16s getting up and I've got a four ship selector right here, but yeah, I'll just have a, a closer look at this. Now, F-16, F-16, C block 50s, and the picture there is a uh, Air National Guard, South Carolina Air Guard example from uh, from McIntyre, uh, just actually just down the road from here. And the version that we are presented with here, it's the, it's the CCIP version or the avionics and just other improvements to the F-16. And coming down and seeing exactly what all this does. APG-68 with the CCIP improvement, 60 mile range, fire control radar, and of course the 20 millimeter gun that's uh, mounted on all F-16s and the uh, ALE-47 chaff and flare dispenser, then AL and ALE-50. So this one has a tow decoy capability that's, that's going to make it a lot more survivable, particularly in a scenario like this where we have a lot of threats up there. So. You can also see that we have a lot, and I mean a lot of loadout options on this aircraft. And looking specifically at what this one has, it's AGM-88C Harm, high-speed anti-radiation missiles. You can see one hung right there on the wing of, uh, don't think that's, that's not a 16. Is that on a, that might be actually be on an F-4 right there. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it is. But you can see the, the 16 firing one right there. So this will just be able to be launched and go in and then home in on any radar that is uh, transmitting from the ground and take it out. And you can see that in this model, as it's modeled here in the database, that it has a home on jam capability. So even if they try to spoof the missile by jamming it, it can just home in on the jamming and take it out that way. It has target memory. So even if the target stops transmitting, it's still going to know where it's at and go ahead and take it out. And you can do a bearing only launch with this missile and just launch it, not assign it a specific target, but then when a target goes active, it'll just swoop down and, and take it out. I mean, it doesn't have that much uh, loiter time doing that. You just basically loft it and then hope something goes active that it can track, but this is going to do a lot for us here. 70 miles for the range, so let's say, for example, we were looking to take out, I don't know, this talking radar. Let me drag the cursor on over. Yes, yeah, 70 miles is right there where my cursor is, so we're gonna have to get in close, and the closer we get, obviously, the closer to the fighters we get, and that's why I want to bring in the F-22s and let them even the even the odds a little bit for us before we start getting the older. And it's weird to call a F-16, especially one with the CCIP upgrade, older, but that's that's what the F-22 does. Now we also have F-16s with the ADM-130, or I'm sorry, ADM-160 Mall D, and I think there were. A couple of different variants of the ADM 160 that I saw here. And you can see that it just mounts externally, the wings fold out, and it just goes into the target area, mimicking the signature of any aircraft that it wants to mimic. A very cool weapon. It's not a new concept, but yeah, these are very, very capable as, uh, as decoys, and I intend to use them here and try to confuse the enemy as much as I much as I possibly can. And I think the other variant of the Mall D that I had here, I think was the ADM 160C that has uh, built in jamming capabilities. So it's going to be like having, it's just going to be like doubling the number of aircraft that I have at my disposal here when it comes to executing the mission. And you can see as I get my F-18Fs, my Super Hornets up, these are loaded with AGM-88s, but these have the agm 88 E model that you can see there on a display, well, a display missile with markings saying that it's a live warhead and live missile. That's not something you see every day. And then you have the inert display missile with the blue bands down here. You can see it being fired off of an F 18F, or well, maybe that's a G, but yeah. Anyway, this is an upgrade to the C model that we were just looking at. It's reading through the, uh, the text right here. It has GPS capability to kind of back up its own little INS and make it a lot more accurate when it comes to getting onto the right place or going where it thinks it's going. It says that it also uses an integrated broadcast service, IBS system, and weapon impact assessment subsystem to provide BDA immediately prior to impact. That's, that's neat. So we're still looking at the same range. I believe it's, it's just an upgrade to the avionics package. I think it's the same warhead and the same rocket motor just upgraded upgraded guts to the thing so that's neat uh, playing with uh, playing with new stuff and new capabilities 
And then of course we had the B-52 and all this one's going to go up and do for us is launch. I have 12 ADM-160 Model Ds on there. So this is just going to add to our capability to deceive the enemy as we get going and there will be kind of cool to have a lot more stuff on the B-52. And yeah, this just goes on and on, but I'll tell you a couple of, uh, a couple of jasms or a couple of calcums on this thing or uh, some sort of like a, a standoff strike with a B-52 would be just the thing for this mission as well, but yeah, I'll take what I can get. And I was just talking earlier about the different variants of the Mal D, and this is the Mal D J. It's a decoy like on the other one, but this one has the stand in offensive ECM capability, so I can launch this along with the strike package. And in addition to uh, spoofing the enemy and to thinking there's more aircraft there, this one will be able to jam anything that they decide to transmit. So just a lot of neat features here. And, you know, once they launch these, these uh, jammer decoys, they're still going to have eight A120s and eight A9Xs. The A120s being the D model that you can see being loaded on the F-22 right there. So active radar guided, very long range, 100. Well, that's the data link range. I was fixing to say that's extremely long range. Anywhere from two to 75 miles is the range that we have here in the database for these. So this will be the primary weapon when it comes to taking out all these air threats. The F-22s are actually going to have six of these loaded internally. You can see like in this case with one of them, the A120s will go into the main weapons bay. There's like a like side by side, three missiles on one side, three missiles on the other. And then you have the side weapons bay. You can see the door is partially open right here. Yeah, we'll get back to the F-22s here in a, here in a little bit. And now we have the Growlers getting airborne and heading up into the area. And I'm going to have these guys go on station a little bit closer than everything else so they can provide ECM and jamming support and I might actually have them push in sort of with the or right behind the F-22s and the seed package as they go in to start to jam any enemy radars that uh, decide to come down and and take a look but you can see just built-in jammers on the wings and they also carry a couple of pods under the wings that can also do some jamming for us so let's see that's the what, AOQ-212? Is that the... that's the built-in one, I think? I'm not... But, yeah, defensive ECM capability. Yeah, I was looking for the offensive ECM, so... Yeah, those are the pods I was thinking about. The ANAOQ-99F, under the wings. I think that's under the wings, or maybe I have those two reversed. I, I don't know, but it also has the capability to carry AGM-88s, and didn't I... I think I might have had a, a flight of EA-18s with AGM-88s assigned here, or that might have been an F model. But that's it. Yeah, we'll we'll get it going here in a second. And yeah, yeah, speaking of those, yeah, I had two EA-18s with AGM-88s. It's the AGM-88E that we just we just looked at. So, while I'm thinking about jamming, let me go ahead and get these tracks set up and I'm just going to have them up here forward of the Marshall area one kind of north and one kind of south and this is going to be ECM south I'm going to set the mission doctrine on this one make sure that everything is still squared away here the way that I want it and MCON settings it's going to be okay when I assign them offensive ECM is going to go active for anything that I assigned to this mission and just in case let me go weapons hold on everything else since they will be, be loaded with air-to-air -air missiles and I don't want them unless I specifically tell them to fire some AMRAMs up there. I don't want them firing their missiles. I want to kind of hold them off until I need them to get in there and engage with air-to-air, -air, which is kind of uh, kind of remarkable to think about. I'd never really realized how just how capable these new aircraft like the F-18s are. You know, you have something that can go up there and do just any mission that you throw at it. And, you know, you have a dedicated jamming aircraft like the EC-130, Compass Call. I mean, it, it goes up and it does what an EC-130 does. It just does jamming. But then you have the, you know, taking over really for the old EA-6s. You have aircraft like this. I mean, the EA-6 could fire an AGM-88, but, you know, I wouldn't want to put an EA-6 into like an air-to-air -air type role. Whereas this one has, well, it has four M120Ds, so it can go in and do what it needs to do, and then if it needs to turn and run, it's, well, it's an F-18, so it can turn and run. It can do whatever it wants to do. So that's that one. Let me get one more ACM, ECM track set up, and this will be ECM North.
Okay, and I'll set up one more Marshall area up here, and I'll just make it just due south of the ones that I have already established. And I'll just call this one Marshall uh, AI or Strike. Now, make it a support mission, okay. So this will keep us, you know, kind of organized. You know, I have, if I just want to reach down and grab a air-to-air -air aircraft, they're right there. If I want to reach down and grab a seed or an ECM aircraft, they're right there. If I want to reach down and grab one of my striker aircraft, they're going to be right there once I assign them. Now let's go ahead and get these guys airborne so we don't have these guys wasting too much fuel, although it's not going to be an issue with this type of fighter. It's not that long a flight around these targets, and I, I do have the tankers up there if I do need to top them off. So let me go ahead and bring up the side briefing one more time and we'll get everything that was intended to do an AI, an interdiction or strike mission up. So let's see, four by Typhoon's Venom flight. Okay, we have Venom 1, 2, 3, and 4 with Payway 4. These are just uh, kind of like a GB-12, the Mark 82 bomb body, except with a much, much better seeker head and guidance unit. We'll, we'll look at that once these things get rolling. So, okay, they're assigned and they're going to get airborne and marshal as a four ship, I have Ascot. These are going to be Tornado GR4s, four of them. So Ascot flight with a Storm Shadow that we already looked at a little bit a while back. Savage flight, a four by F-18Fs. So Savage one, two, three, and four with the Jasm. We have Combat flight f 35 six of them, and these are the F-35Bs. These are the these are the Marines. It's the uh, short takeoff and landing uh, version of the F-35, so that was six of them with GB-32s. These are uh, JDAMs, GPS guided munitions, 1,000 pound Mark 83 bomb bodies on two of them. And okay, we have four of them with GB-53, these are SDB-2s, or like an upgraded version of the uh, GB-39 small diameter bomb. Let's go ahead and get them allocated and get them airborne, and those I will probably... I don't know, I might have to think up something special to do with the F-35s here just to, you know, it's something that I haven't really played around with is uh, looking at, you know, throwing an F-35 or even throwing an F-22 into a scenario like this and just seeing, you know, what a fifth generation aircraft is capable of in one of these scenarios. I mean, this is a very, very, it's almost an unfair scenario because, I mean, you're just up against so much. So no matter what we do, I would expect to have heavy losses, fifth generation or not, but We'll be able to we'll be able to toy around with them at any rate. Okay, Tiger. We have ten F-15 Strike Eagles, so that'll be two four ships and a two ship with. Let me see. I've got six of them with GBU-31 version three. So these are going to be the Penetrator type JDAMs, and this will be good for well, you name it. Uh, preferably some sort of hardened target so that it can penetrate. So four of them actually version threes, and I have two version ones with a Mark 84 bomb body. As you hear, uh. Here, an F-16 going by me right now. Let's see here. We've got GBU-54s, laser JDAM, so it's just a, well, it's a GBU-38, just a regular JDAM, except with a, a seeker in the nose that can pick up a laser spot. So it acts as kind of like a laser-guided bomb and a GPS-guided bomb at once. Okay, so that actually might be the gamblers getting, uh, getting airborne right now that are uh, a little ways down the road or a little ways up the flight path from here. Let's see here. Okay, we had Vegas 4x F-35As, and those are going to be the Air Force fixed wing, just conventional, non-short takeoff and landing aircraft, and they're going to have JDAMs, Mark 84 version 1s. And there we go, four more gamblers, uh, F-16 CJs, interdiction mission. And these have, yeah, these have JASMs as well. Okay, I have Darth, which is the B-2 strike, and then I have Gremlin, which is the B-52 strike. Now, let me let me put... Well, there's no harm in... Uh, you know, for all of this stuff, I mean, if you're looking at this and you're an expert on the red flag, and you're just looking at me and saying, oh, no, you would put you would put the Marshall Point, like, over here, and you would have your tanker tracks over here. I'm not really trying to recreate it. I mean, a person could, just based on research and stuff just freely available on the Internet, you could put together exactly how one of these would go you know, just putting the pieces together but yeah i'm really going for more just organization and how i can keep things organized and make this stuff happen it's it's not going to be easy and the the fewer tracks and the fewer groups of aircraft that i have and just all over the place up here the better 
But yeah, in, in, in either case, I'm just going to put the B2 and the B52s up there on that same track. Have them marshal at the same place, and that's going to be it. That's just going to leave me some additional support aircraft and some ISR assets that I can also start to get airborne from Creech. Now, let's see. Yeah, Marshall AI. Let's go for the remaining buff. Gremlin 2 with Jasm on a heavy stores adapter beam, so this will have a lot of Jasms on it. And we'll have a we'll have a closer look at all these aircraft once we start to pick them out and get them into the mission. I want to save some of this stuff for the middle of the mission. And B2s. Okay, Darth 1 and Darth 2 with GBU-57 MOPs, Massive Ordnance Penetrators. Okay, we'll assign them and get them airborne. Okay. 